Welcome to the ABID Instructor Podcast, a show dedicated to helping you level up your instruction in order to craft authentic learning experiences for both you and your students. I'm your host, Lee Tucker, a high school English teacher and ed tech enthusiast, and I want to join you on your journey to becoming the best instructor that you possibly can. So if you're ready, grab your adventuring gear and let's get going. What's up, 8-Bit Crew? Today is Thursday, January 7th, 2021, and this is episode 22 of the 8-Bit Instructor Podcast. Happy New Year, everyone. It's good to be back. I took a few weeks off to just get some rest and re-energize, and I, f- I feel really good. We, we we got a lot of rest over the holiday break and uh, got to just relax and enjoy time with my family. Hopefully you guys did too. It's good to uh, bring in a new year. We're bringing in a new semester this week. So hopefully all of you got a lot of good rest as well and you are ready to get going this second semester. I've got a special guest later on for the boss battle today. Mizba Gadal from Wakelet joins me and we talk a a, a little sports, uh, but also uh, we talk about Wakelet and some creative and innovative things that you can use that for in your classroom. So make sure to check that conversation out a little bit later. But before that, uh, a little bit of news and updates, and then we'll open up the treasure chest. There aren't a whole lot of updates uh, for for now because you know a lot of a lot of the companies were were celebrating the holidays as well, so uh, there not a lot of new stuff coming out. I did, however, want to take a minute to look at some pretty big education news uh, nationwide, and that is President-elect Biden's nomination of Dr. Miguel Cardona as the Secretary of Education. And if confirmed, he will you know, take over uh, here in the next couple of months. And just a couple of things, you know, I, I haven't read a ton about him, but uh, some of the stuff that I've read uh, is really uh, encouraging to me as an educator in a public high school. Um, one quote from uh, Daisha Toll, the chief executive of Achievement First, a national network of charter schools, um, says that he is at heart much more of an educator than a politician or an ideologue. I think he's very practical. He's very focused on what's best for students, especially the highest needs students. And I think one of the things that kind of encourages me about um, seeing him nominated is the idea of bringing in some more diversity to education. He is Latino, so he definitely comes in with that kind of background into education. He's done a lot of work with, you know, high needs students. And so um, I'm encouraged, uh, you know, all Politics aside, I'm encouraged that it it seems to be a move to help bring in some more equality and more equity into the larger education system as a whole. So, um, you know, he still has to go through confirmation and all that. But uh, if if he does get appointed, I think um, that could that could mean some some pretty good things for uh, public educators. So that's pretty much it for news for right now. So why don't we go ahead and pop open the treasure chest and see what's inside this week. So the treasure chest this week actually is a quote from Buddha. Um, And not to get philosophical, but I thought it was a really great idea for uh, this week and and getting back into things. And uh, it's the quote, he says, every morning we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. And I wanted to just kind of take a minute to look back at the idea of the beginning of this second semester and that it's it's a great time to hit the reset button. You know, at the end of first semester in December, a lot of times we're doing a lot of reflecting and looking at what has gone well, what needs work, all that kind of stuff. January is a great time to start to implement some of those uh, reflections um, and also to just start things anew. So things that didn't work well last semester, maybe you still give them a second chance, but you tweak it a little bit. Um, 
I, I also look at the same thing with students. So, you know, you know, August to December, you had students, you've, you've gotten to know them, you've got to learn them, you know, their work ethic and all that kind of stuff. And I think a lot of times those uh, difficult students, the ones who uh, don't have as much of the motivation and all that, uh, we tend to kind of get lax on them in the sense of, um, you know, after a few months of of really trying to prod them and and, and push them and motivate them, we kind of not necessarily give up. We just spend a lot less time with that. And I think, you know, everybody deserves a second chance, maybe even a third, a fourth, a fifth chance. And so one of the challenges that I would kind of throw out to you guys out there is to try to give those students a new start in a new semester. So regardless of what they did, good or bad, start fresh, start anew and and work with them. Same thing for you. You've got to give yourself a second chance as well. Especially this year, we tried things, they didn't work. Don't kick yourself for it. Learn from those mistakes, tweak it, or throw it out uh, and, and, and move on. But start new, second semester, it's a great time to, to kind of reset uh, and, and start again. So that's kind of my idea today. Uh, Maybe just a a little challenge, a little bit of an encouragement. So that will take care of the intro segment. Up next is going to be the boss battle. Mizba Gadal is going to take us for a ride on the wakelet wave. Try saying that three times fast. So today with me on the show, I have Mizba Gadal uh, from Wakelet. Welcome, Mizba. Hi, hi, Lee. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks Pleasure to be here. Thanks for being on here. So Mizba works for Wakelet. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do at Wakelet. Sure thing. So I'll let you know a little bit about what Wakelet is first. Um, we're a uh, free to use uh, uh, content curation platform, um, but don't let that scare you. The word uh, curation is very, very simple. Um, the platform allows you to save, organize, uh, present, share any kind of online content into these really visual, engaging looking collections. And um, it's awesome for independent learning, group based learning, uh, critical thinking, creativity. Um, and yeah, you can create these stunning interactive visual learning environments uh, using Wakelet and um, it's completely free to use which is always always puts a smile on an educator's face definitely um, free to use and completely unlimited as well so awesome. you can create as many collections as you like you can invite as many collaborators as you like there are simply no limits and no restrictions um, I've been with Wakelet now for six years um, I've worn lots of different hats during my time here I was here when we just started a very small office and um, yeah I've, I've, I've kind of you know, led marketing for a while, done some partnerships work, uh, a lot of creative stuff. And at the moment, I'm uh, currently leading engagement, which is a fascinating role, uh, kind of like a bridge between the um, the actual product and the platform and our amazing community and um, the people that use Wakelet, just coming up with really awesome ideas on, 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 you know, different initiatives and different ways that educators can use Wakelet and get involved with our community. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's uh, Wakelet and my role in a nutshell. Awesome, awesome. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into more uh, Wakelet stuff in a little bit. But before we do that, sure. just, just some, uh, some, some get to know you kind of things. So sure. I, I like to talk to people about kind of their, their stories in education because one of the things I've found is uh, there's, there's a lot of a connecting point uh, between, you know, me and lots of people, just different experiences in, in the education world, where, whether it's going through school or becoming an educator mm-hmm. or anything like that. So uh, tell us, what, what are some of your maybe kind of like uh, significant moments or, or stories that got you connected to kind of the education world? That's a really, really good question. Um, okay, so uh, personally, I mean, I've, I've, I think every kid goes through a phase in school when they, they want to be a teacher. You know, they see how cool it is. They see they've got the attention of the class. You know, mm-hmm. they want to, they, they go through that phase. And I think for me, it, it, it lasted quite some time, actually. You know, I, I really wanted to, to, to teach. Um, 
uh, I don't know how long that lasted, but it didn't it didn't last long enough for me to actually go ahead and do it. Um, right. I ended up getting into uh, into law. Um, I studied hmm. law in Manchester. Uh, sorry, studied law in Liverpool and Manchester, um, and then uh, worked across North Africa, shipping all that kind of thing. Um, but I've always been very very interested in education. I've always had this kind of unquenchable thirst for knowledge. You know, I really hate it when. Uh, people are having a conversation about something and I don't know what they're talking about. It's mm-hmm. a pet peeve of mine. So right. uh, I love, you know, any, if you, if there's a general knowledge quiz going anywhere, <laughs> Lee, you just let me know. Cause okay. I rock at those. <laughs> nice. um, and then in terms of Wakelet, like when we, when we first started, um, you know, Wakelet was, you know, a content curation platform bookmarking. I mean, it still is. Mm-hmm. Um, our focus is, is on education right now because uh, somewhere along the way, and it was around about the time uh, that Storify uh, closed. I don't know if many of you remember that platform, but it's like a social yeah. bookmarking platform. A lot of educators used it. Mm-hmm. Um, they they announced that they were going to close their doors, and um, you know there's a kind of mass exodus from Storify over to Wakelet because you know Wakelet did a, a lot of things that Storify did, and a lot of things better, and um, you know. As educators joined the platform and started using it more, um, this kind of community started to develop. And, you know, they were talking about using Wakelet in ways that we had never imagined. So, Mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden you've got educators using Wakelet for student portfolios for uh, classroom newsletters mm-hmm. for lesson plans and it's like you know we were just here like whoa you know this is <laughs> this is a surprise you know so we um we we really just tried to foster an amazing environment for these community um these educators in the community to kind of grow and share their ideas and um you know we if, if an educator had an idea about how to use wakelet we try and magnify it and mm-hmm. put it out there and help others use it in the same way and um you know it's now it's now it's become your platform you know it's uh, it's it's right. no longer ours. We, yeah. we 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 do quite. I mean, we do a lot in terms of um, you know the development of the platform and you know the the, the community initiatives and you know we work extremely long hours. Um, but the the ideas and the features and things like that they all come from the educator community. So it's a brief history of Wakelet and how we kind of got into the the educator business, if you will. Yeah, I like that the idea of community too. Just the the way that you. Can can get just so many new ideas kind of like mm-hmm. you said like uh, why didn't I ever you know think about it before and mm. and and just the idea that community sparks creativity and, and new ideas I, just, oh, I think 100%. that's a great great thing yeah so uh, before I move on so I, I saw you're in Manchester right that's right so I guess I guess the the big question is are you a city or united <laughs> man that's listen the <laughs> amount of times i've been asked that question especially from americans right. you're confirming the stereotype here oh, every no. time <laughs> every time every time somebody hears manchester they ask are you united right. or a city fan right um okay so sorry to disappoint but i'm neither i'm right. actually uh, this will probably be more pleasing to you but i'm i'm more of a, a basketball fan myself oh, okay I've, yeah yeah i've been a uh, miami heat fan for a, a long long time okay. um i i follow basketball Basketball more. I, play, I played basketball since I was a, a kid. Football. I, my feet are too big. I wear, yeah. I wear a size thirteen UK, um, which I think is a size twelve US. Maybe uh-huh. I'm not sure. Um, but I was never good at football. My my foot to ball coordination is not very good. But um, basketball, I, I, I enjoyed, and mm. you know, I, I, I played really well. So okay. neither. I'm afraid. If I had to pick one, <laughs> I'm go, I'd go with Manchester United just because uh-huh. there's more of a legacy. You know, it goes yeah. back much much further, and they had an incredible incredible uh, coach um Alex Ferguson, you know, he's one of yeah. the legendary mm-hmm. sports leaders. So I'd have to go with, I'd have to go with them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, see, I'm, I'm a, I'm a city fan, but okay, most okay. Of it, it's mostly because uh, they did a tour here in the United States and right. uh, they came through Atlanta. And so uh, my mother-in-law got my wife and I tickets to, oh, to see Manchester city play uh, club America. And okay. so uh, I had, you know, just kind of that connection. So I kind of started following them a little bit from there, but, uh, 
um, apologize for for stereotyping <laughs> you there. Oh no no no! It's, I'm, I'm just I'm just kidding. It just when when you say Manchester, that tends to be the first question right. people ask. Right. Um, to be fair, that's probably you know it's 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 it's, it's in your defense, it's probably the most well known uh, uh, kind of institution which we've put out Manchester. Right. I mean, yeah. aside from you know uh, the computer and the uh, the cotton mills and you know all the other incredible things right, we've done, right. it seems to be. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, no, I'd, I'd go with I'd go with Manchester United if I had a you know a gun to my head. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So just a, a fun a little question to kind of follow up. So uh, a quick little uh, kind of would you rather uh, scenario? Would you uh, and and maybe this this might be a, a regional kind of thing too. Would you rather live without internet or without air conditioning and heating? <sighs> I mean, definitely without internet, like, mm. like the, like the internet's fantastic, man. Like, I, Hey, listen, I could get on a whole run about the internet right now. Right. You could open up Pandora's box here with what I could say. I mean, like, in, okay. So in the U, okay, this is what I find really interesting in the U S when you talk about air conditioning, you talk about making the room colder, right? Mm -hmm. That's yes. like switch the air con on in the UK. It's the opposite in the UK. When we say put the air con on, that means, you know, crank up the heat. Like it's getting freezing in here. Huh. Um, where we live in Manchester, Manchester is a, a notoriously wet, windy, kind of gray city. I mean, I suppose mm -hmm. you could compare it to Chicago. Um, you know, it has that windy kind of... Yeah. Wet, like, the seasons all kind of blend into one. So, mm -hmm. um, I definitely... Listen, like, short answer to a very long question. I mean, I'd, 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 I'd definitely go without the internet. I'd yeah. stick with the, with the warm water, the warm and the... Uh, the, the the cold uh, yeah on on top for sure <laughs> yeah I mean I'm in Georgia so deep south it's I mean I, I I don't even know how they used to live here back before air conditioning right, during the right. summers because man it just it's rough. Okay, so, I mean, you say you say it's rough. It sounds like a dream to us here in the UK. Man. <laughs> we honestly, like, we we are we are on a, on a constant quest to try and get sunshine. You know, we all right. we're all vitamin D deficient. Um, you know, the, <laughs> you see a crack of sunshine every that can maybe like three or four weeks out of the entire year will oh. be just consistent sunshine. The rest of it's just kind of wind and rain, and you know. But hey, come to the UK. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Uh, one more fun, fun little thing. I, I like to connect people. Is I, I grew up kind of as a, as a gamer playing, you know, Nintendo and all that. So I always like to, to ask people to, to kind of see, uh, you know, about them. What is uh, what, what's your favorite game to play? Okay, so by like, I mean, I was I was a, a big gamer when I was a kid as well, and I still enjoy playing video games. I think mm -hmm. that they I see them as an art form, and you know, I'm very into the how they're made, and I love seeing the history behind them. I love seeing you know the music. I think music plays a big part of video games. Oh yeah, my my favorite game of all time, the one which had the last the biggest lasting impact on me, is Ocarina of Time uh, oh, Legend of yes. Zelda on the Nintendo 64. I mean, that's my that's my childhood. When I hear the music to the opening screen of that song, it yes. doesn't matter what mood I'm in, I feel like, okay, this is adventure calling, you know, like... You, you, you can't get any better than that, I think, in terms of, uh, you know, game design, the characters, the music as well. The music is incredible. Oh, yeah. So I'd say that that's the, my favorite of all time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have you played uh, Breath of the Wild yet? Yeah, of course, okay. man. I love that. I played that last Christmas. I sunk uh, like 100 hours into it before I realized I'd, <laughs> I, I'd spent way too long at it. But yeah, that's, again, ph phenomenal. Right. We, we, we just got to switch back uh, at the end of the, the summer. So I got my, uh, my six-year-old daughter is, is playing that with me right now. So right. we've been having fun with that. I would love to do that. See, that, that's my my dream is to. I don't have any kids, right? When I have when I have kids, I'd love to be to play a Zelda game with them. I think that's a beautiful thing. Like, yeah. props to you, man. Yeah, enjoy. Yeah. It. It's uh, I'm trying to trying to teach her right, you know. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, so, some of the stuff on the the Wakelet platform and, and just kind of how that can be utilized in the classroom. So you sure. know, you, you mentioned the the idea of it being a, a curation kind of platform and, and, mm -hmm. and developing critical thinking skills and all that kind of stuff. So um, just as an introductory kind of thing, if, if mm. we had somebody who has not necessarily used that in their classroom, what, mm. what would you say um, would be some easy ways to incorporate mm. Wakelet mm. just into maybe 
day to day uh, things that they're already doing. Sure, sure. Well, I'll, I'll rein me in if I if I go on for too long. By the way, okay. just no, you know, you're, make you're sure good. make sure. <laughs> um, so. Uh, as a as a concept, Wakelet's very very simple, right? So mm-hmm. you just simply copy and paste any kind of content that you find on the web into a collection, and then most of the time it will embed that content. So if you copy and paste a YouTube video into Wakelet, it becomes a YouTube video. You know, viewers can experience that content all in one place, exactly how it sh- should be seen. Mm-hmm. And literally anything can be added to a Wakelet collection, right? So you can add you know videos, social media posts, uh, podcasts, music articles, anything with a URL. Okay. can be added. And, um, you know, when you start off with a, a concept that's simple, the amount of seedlings that grow from that, and then those seedlings become, you know, big oak trees with lots of different ideas branching off. Mm-hmm. Um, it, 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 it's a very simple concept, but with hundreds and hundreds of different ways that you can use it, depending on what you want your learning outcomes to be with your students and what you want to achieve yourself as well. So let's say you wanted to increase communication between yourself as a teacher and the parents of the kids in your class, right? Okay. Well, Wakelet allows you to create um, these classroom newsletters. And when we're saying newsletters, right, it's just a collection. All mm-hmm. of all of Wakelet is just a collection. But when when you dress it up in a certain way, it becomes something different. It takes a life of its own. So if I was to if I if I wanted to create a Wakelet newsletter, I'd create a collection as normal, and then I'd record a Flipgrid video, and I'd say, you know, hey, 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 uh, parents, or hey, class, or whatever, you know, this is a, a quick wrap up of week five that we're in right now. Here's what we uh, uh, learned. Uh, uh, you know, this is um, uh, below you can find, uh, you know, the calendar, the social calendar uh, below. You can find some of the highlights of the class uh, and you can also find the form that you fill in um, if you want your kids to go on this particular school trip or whatever. Right. Yeah. And then underneath that Flipgrid video, you add a PDF, you add an image, you add a link, you add a map of where the uh, field trip is going to be. You know, you, 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 you add as much content as you like. And the beautiful thing about Wakelet is that you can contextualize that content, you know, so So it's all about the context. It's all about adding your own spin to it. I always say start small and have fun, okay? When you join the Wake Club community, when you kind of see what other educators are doing, um, you know, sometimes you can be like, hey, I've not got time to do a newsletter. I've not got time to do it. Okay, cool. Start small and have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, create a collection called uh, my learning resources or my teaching resources. And then whenever you come across a piece of content that you think is going to help support your teaching or a really neat idea that you found on Twitter or a YouTube video of a product that you want to start using, you just save it into a weekly collection, you know? And then once you've saved it, you can then be like, okay, I'm going to invite, you know, three more teachers in my PLN and they, they can start contributing. And then you'd be like, okay, actually now I want to share this. I want to put this online. And, um, you know, things things kind of grow and develop from then. But right. uh, day-to-day usage, I would say the most the most way that uh, the most kind of popular way that educators are using it is is simply just to save organize present and share learning learning and teaching resources because it's okay, magical yeah. you know any any uh, any piece of content that you put into wakelet is going to look like how it should be and mm-hmm. You, you know, people who are viewing it aren't going to kind of spin off and go down the, uh, the, the, the rabbit hole of YouTube or Twitter because it's all in one place. And they don't have to leave that place in order to experience the content. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of focused and, and mm. less uh, That's the word. distracted. That's the word. I, okay. I, I used a thousand words to, to use that one <laughs> word. <laughs> Focus. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's no, interesting because I yeah, know back in March when um, when whenever all the schools started shutting down and, and going mm-hmm. online, you know, I, I saw you know a big thing was a lot of teachers kind of well, I don't you know what do I need to do and, and I remember like I, I just I did I put together just a little wakelet collection for kind of virtual teaching like here here are some resources to go to and, and kind of shared that out and uh, so something simple like that I think is a, a a great way to get into it a hundred percent yeah like i said start small have fun you know like i can i can see i can see behind you on your wall that you're like you're into comics right oh, yeah you know yeah. you could you could put together a collection on your favorite uh comic book covers you mm-hmm. know like your top 10 and just by doing that uh and and you know you can do that for recipes workout routines whatever it might be just by doing that you understand what the platform does you understand the kind of content you can add to it uh, you can have a play around with the different layouts that we've got and uh you know like i said start small 
small and have some fun with it. Once mm-hmm. you've done that, you realize how it works. And we just let teachers do their own thing, man. You know, teachers yeah. are very creative. They, they, they know what they want to do. And most of the time, whatever your learning outcome, Wakeless is going to be able to, you know, help you, help you achieve it. Okay. Um, and I know you have been adding a lot more integrations into mm. what, what you can do with it. What are, what are some of the maybe, uh, recent integrations, uh, yeah. with other websites and all that? So once we start to get into education, we realized that educators use a lot of different tools, right? And we don't want to get in the way of those tools. We want to work with those tools. So, um, you know, I think it's frustrating and I'm speaking from experience. It's frustrating when you're used to one particular platform Mm -hmm. and another platform comes and you're like, okay, you know, this is just another platform that I have to kind of use now. And I got to, you know, there's going to be stuff on it. I'm going to have to check up, check it every day, blah, blah, blah. Well, we're like, no, we want to take a different approach. We want to be able to integrate with absolutely everything so that we don't interrupt your workflow and that if you're on Google Classrooms, you you can share stuff within one click from Wakelet to Google Classrooms. Hmm. Same with Microsoft Teams. Um, you know, if you're using uh, Microsoft OneDrive or if you're using Google Drive, you can connect your account and then just quickly, you know, save something from your drive into a Wakelet collection. The integration that we did with Flipgrid was absolutely phenomenal. We announced yeah. that in uh, at ISTE 2019 at the Flipgrid Live event that they did. And um, that, to me, is the most powerful uh, okay. integration that we've got because... You know, Flipgrid have done an incredible job of bringing, you know, the, the, the magic of uh, video into the classroom and, uh, you know, boosting kids' confidence and that kind of thing. Well, yeah. with Wakelet, it takes, it, 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 it enhances that, you know, in, in a way because let's say you've, let's say you've created a, a list of resources that you want your students to check out. Well, especially now with remote learning, now you just click on the Flipgrid button in Wakelet, it opens up the camera and you can record up to 10 minutes of video with all the, all the effects you can screen share, you can upload video, do whatever you want. And it's within that Wakelet environment. So you can talk about the, um, you can talk about the different, uh, resources. You can contextualize them. You can give instruction for your class. For me, that's the most important one, especially now, because, Mm -hmm. you know, kids are used to seeing your face as a teacher and all of a sudden they're not seeing you much anymore. Right. So being able to add that, that, you know, that video, um, uh, media into the mix, into the lesson plan, into the assignment, right. It just brings them one step closer to, to being more personal. Um, on top of that, I mean, we integrate with a whole bunch of things, whether you're a Google school or a Microsoft school, you know, you're going to be able to quickly share Wakelet collections. Um, uh, another one, which a lot of people overlook is LMS platforms, right? So right. whether it's canvas or Schoology or whatever it might be, um, you know, uh, Blackboard, you can embed a Wakelet collection into any page in an LMS. Sure. Um, this is this is probably one of the most underrated features on Wakelet, right? Because yeah. let's say, like at the beginning when I was talking about how educators like to keep everybody on one platform so that everyone's not kind of dotting around. Yeah. Well, with 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 uh, Wakelet, you can create a collection of resources. You can then copy the embed code, paste it into your LMS page, and boom, it's right there and it interacts exactly as it would if it was on the Wakelet website. And and you're keeping everything in one place. It's much easier than uh, manually embedding loads of different pieces of media at once, or just yeah. having a you know like a massive list of hyperlinks, which are really they're not very engaging. They're not they're not very interactive. Mm-hmm. You know, all of a sudden when it's on Wakelet, everything pops. You know, you got colors, you got a background, you got you know all the media embedded. So. Yeah. yeah, so adding that visual aspect of it, and right. that's always like my thing with students is when we're doing stuff online is is trying to as few clicks as possible because mm. they mm. get lost in a lot of that. So um, that's I, I like that embedding idea, um, right? Keeping Especially it. nowadays, man. Like like you know nowadays the like my attention span when I was a kid was was terrible, and yeah. most of my class was, and you know we didn't have cell phones, right? Uh, you know at hand. Um, so, you know, nowadays I think kids, they expect things to be colorful. They expect things to be very responsive and quick. Yeah. And, um, and like you said, you know, it's easy for kids to get distracted. So the, the idea of everything in one place is, is at the core of, of Wakelet. You know, it's yeah. bringing things from loads of different, look, Twitter's super distracting. You know, you can spend an hour on Twitter and all of a sudden you're like, where did it go, right? Oh, right. Yeah, definitely. It's the same with YouTube. The amount of YouTube rabbit holes I've been down, you know, the 
recommended videos telling you what to watch next and so on and so forth. Well, being able to just take the individual content and then bring it all together into one place and be like, this is what you need to watch in isolation. And here's a tweet to back it up. Here's an article to back it up. I've added a PDF. It just, it makes the students be like, okay, this is where I should be. You know, there's no distractions. Awesome. So you talked about some of the kind of simple ways. Um, I just, I'm curious, um, what are some of the, what are some of the most innovative ways you've seen uh, either teachers or students use this? Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> this is where it starts to get fun. Uh, right. two, two ideas spring to mind straight up, okay? <laughs> the first one, which I think is great for the beginning of the year, is um, meet, meet the teacher and meet the students, right? Mm-hmm. So basically, students would sign up to Wakelet and they would create a Wakelet collection. And this Wakelet collection would be all about me. And in this collection, they would put, um, you know, let's say if they played on the basketball team, they put a video of themselves shooting the game winning shot. Or yeah. if they played an instrument, you know, they put a, a video of that on uh, pictures of their family, you know, things that things that really flesh out who they are as a human. And um, they'd create the Wakelet collection and uh, they would send the QR code of that Wakelet collection to their teacher. And the teacher would then have like, let's say, you know, 25 to 30 different QR codes. Uh, They would print them out (laughs) and they would uh, shuffle them and put a random QR code on random areas on the on the table on different desks. Right. Mm -hmm. So the students, naturally, what they do is when they enter class for the first time, they see a QR code staring them in the face. They're going to pull their devices out and they're going to try and scan it. Right. And what comes up is a, uh, a, a collection that one of their classmates has done about who they are as a person. They look around, they find the classmate. Boom, you have that instant human connection, that instant introduction. Yeah. And um, and for, for me, that was like super, super innovative. If you go on my Twitter, just at Ms. Begadal, uh-huh. um, you'll be able to see it. I think I actually know I, I de-pinned it recently, but I did a quick TikTok video about it because I was so uh, so kind of enthralled at the possibilities. Um, yeah. The other idea, which was really awesome, was we had a, a, an educator called Scott St. Dennis, and um, he was uh, he did this amazing thing with, with his students where he he take this is pre pandemic, so he'd take his students mm-hmm. to the um, the classroom library. Uh, sorry, not the library, the public library. And this is awesome, by the way, for librarians. Mm-hmm. Take them to the uh, public library. As a group of like three or four, they'd choose a book, they'd study the book, they'd read it, and then they'd create a Wakelet collection. And, uh, you know, in this Wakelet collection, they'd talk about their thoughts, how the book made them feel. And, you know, if you could choose a song on Spotify that would help you explain the feeling of this book, what would it be? What kind of images does this book, you know, everything about the book, they put it down as a group. They would then, again create and there's a beautiful creative aspect to this because they would then digitally create bookmarks right and in these bookmarks they would add the QR code to that collection that book review they then laminate the Q, laminate the uh, bookmark which has the QR code attached put it back in the book and then return it to the public library huh. and then whenever somebody takes that book out they'll have the bookmark they'll be able to scan it they'll be able to see what this class of students thought of the book um, really impactful it hits so many different learning outcomes engaged yeah. so many different skills and again like I'd be lying to you completely if I said that we could come up with ideas like this as a team um, we know we can't this is this is the magic of educators this is yeah. how innovative they get so that's just two examples but I mean there's so many more we could be here for five hours talking right, about right, them. right. <laughs> well, those are some cool ideas again like stuff that I, that I didn't necessarily think about myself too so mm-hmm. um, cool um, so last last kind of thing to to wrap up um just uh to to see what i can get so we're 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 doing this in at the end of november uh do you uh is there anything that you can talk about about new (laughs) things uh that are kind of coming on the horizon (laughs) (laughs) okay so like we're 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 super secretive to an extent about the stuff that we have planned right right um we've obviously we've got a lot of different languages um coming out we've just released Mm -hmm. um a bunch of different languages uh croatian polish spanish uh we're gonna have more language support and then in terms of our features just just know that whether it's an integration or whether it's an enhancement or whether it's a feature or whether it's an awesome partnership we're always working on stuff behind the scenes like really exciting stuff um, okay. I can't give unfortunately <laughs> man I'd love to I can't give I can't drop any hints right now no um, I get it <laughs> but just but just 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 know that 
you know, if you're an educator listening to this and you have a player on with the Wake Up platform and you think to yourself, hey, you know, I'd, it'd be really cool if there was this feature or this functionality or this integration, tweet us. Like, we're, we're on line 24 hours a day, right? We pick mm-hmm. up anything anybody ever mentions about Wakelet online know that it's not going to get lost like we we are dedicated as a team to check Twitter and see what people are asking for and what they're talking about so you know with Microsoft OneNote for example there was a you know a, an educator put out a tweet and they said uh, you know wouldn't it be great if Wakelet could integrate with OneNote I want to do it uh, you know I, I want to do X, Y, and Z with my students and this would really help Yeah, you know Microsoft team Wakelet team got in touch with each other. Within a week, the integration was out. Boom, wow. done. So, you know, all the cool ideas that you have, just know that they're being listened to. Like, we're listening to them and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hear echoes. We'll speak to other educators about them and then we'll, we'll get them on the platform. If they make sense, we'll get them on the platform. So it's very, very feature rich. There's, there's plenty of awesome stuff coming. Um, we, we do have the, uh, the iOS app and the Android app out as well. And they're mm-hmm. constantly getting updates. Like, you know, it's either like a, a weekly to two weekly uh, sprints now, you know, we're getting new updates on that. So, I'm sorry to disappoint if I did, man. Like, <laughs> no, we got some. <laughs> I, I know how like the, the the tech world is, and in, in, you, you know you don't you don't give away your secrets until it's it's ready to go. So right, and when it's ready to go, we like to drop little hints. You know, yeah. sometimes sometimes when we do our webinars and stuff, the team, myself included, you know, we'll get and we just get intoxicated by the energy of the community. We'll just let certain things slip, you know, or right. we'll we'll share some previews, and and you know we shouldn't, but you know we do we do it, and we love the reaction and um, yeah. you know what we do when we have any any major updates is we we, we make a, a real song and dance of it people love it I don't know if you saw Lee but um, if you go on our, our Wakelet channel uh, you can see what we did for our uh, launch of the Spaces feature mm-hmm. so very quickly just to wrap up I know we've not got much time Spaces basically allows you to create uh, classrooms it allows you to create these little learning environments where you can invite your students into and they can create collections and collaborate and um, this was a feature which we'd been working on for quite some time and we did like a full live launch thousands of people watching us live on on youtube we had like a dj set we recorded this awesome skit uh, and then we announced the feature so you know you you, you'll know when when anything bigs around the corner (laughs) right right awesome well, Misba, thanks so much for being on here and, and talking a little bit about Wakelet and the platform and just some creative things that that teachers can do and and hopefully this will you know help out uh, to to expand what we can do in our class. Oh, one hundred percent, man! And hey, thank thank you as well. It was great meeting you at the conference, and yeah. uh, I, I, you know, I, I love that you've got a um, uh, a podcast like this. You know, like I, 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 it's 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 incredible. I know that it's it's it it's difficult sometimes when you want to kind of start projects like this, but yeah, um, the, it's it's you know just keep keep on doing it. I have this funny thing called the rule of a hundred, right? It's mm-hmm. where you put out whether you're whether you're a creative putting out like a comic book or, or you know. A, a video or whatever it might be the aim shouldn't be how many people will view this or listen to this or see this or interact with it the aim should be i'm gonna get like a hundred episodes out that's right. the aim after a hundred you're gonna smash it like after a hundred if you if you've committed to doing a hundred episodes of anything at some point it's gonna explode it's gonna get really big so yeah, it makes you know sense. I, I i i love being on this man i really appreciate your interest in wakelet and uh you know uh, let's get this out to the community and you know everyone Everyone will be able to hear it. It'll be awesome. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> so that was Mizba Gadal from Wakelet. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Mizba Gadal. Next up is the 8-Bit Crew Community Question of the Week. For this week's question of the week, we're all about Wakelet this week. So I'd like to know what your experience with Wakelet is. Um, How do you like to use it? What are some of your favorite and creative ways that you have used Wakelet? I'd love to get more ideas to find some new things to do with it in class. 
personally, a couple of my favorites uh, that I have done, I've used it for uh, weekly agenda stuff to send to my virtual students this year. So I'll create a a Wakelet collection for the entire week with links to any kind of documents they need for work, any links to other stuff that they would need for that week. Also, I like to throw in a couple inspirational quotes and some funny memes in there as well. But then I'll send it out to them at the beginning of the week, and then they just have that one single place to go to each day to know what they need to do. I did like the idea that I saw from him, uh, uh, from Mizba, about doing a kind of like a book discussion collection. And uh, that's something that I'm, I'm kind of contemplating using this semester when we do some uh, class novel stuff where I have groups putting together a Wakelet collection uh, over some of the discussions that they've had all over their books. So maybe that's that's something. But uh, if, if you've used it before, let me know. What, what are some of the creative things that you have done with Wakelet? Many thanks again to Ms. Begadal for joining me today and sharing some just tips and tricks about Wakelet and, and things that we can use it for. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Ms. Begadal. You can also follow Wakelet at Wakelet and make sure to check their site out, at wakelet.com. And I also like that that Mizba threw out a little kind of challenge to me about getting 100 episodes of this done. So, you know, I'm on episode 22 right now. We'll hit about maybe 40 something before the end of this semester. So still got a ways to go to hit 100, but hopefully this will continue on and, you know, you guys can share the the show with folks that you know to kind of spread that out, get the community built up even more, and, and get this thing going. On the topic of uh, building up the community and all that, if you have something you'd like to share on the show, if you've done something interesting or tried something new uh, or have a, a, an interesting idea that you've done in class that you want to share, um, please don't hesitate to contact me. I love having uh, folks uh, come on the show and kind of talk about uh, innovative things that they're doing in class. Um, those types of shows tend to be more interesting and engaging to me. Uh, and, and so, uh, getting other people on to talk about things that they're doing in class is, is, is a great thing to do. So uh, reach out to me. You can, you can DM me on Twitter at Comic Socks or you can uh, shoot me an email at 8bit.instructor at gmail.com. And uh, all that stuff is in the show notes and you can check that out. Well, that will just about wrap up this episode. Once again, happy 2021. I hope this year treats you well. And good luck getting back into the classrooms this week and getting that second semester going. And until next week, may your swords stay sharp and your shields hold strong. Thanks so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and check out the 8-Bit Instructor YouTube channel for EdTech tips and tutorials, as well as other content on my website, 8bitinstructor.com. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at ComicSocks and use the hashtag 8BitCrew. See you next week.